Okay, six minutes um, before 10 o'clock, a very short period of time to talk to an author about a really, really good book. Uh, Jason Fagoni is on the phone, I hope. He is a journalist. He covers science, sports, culture. He's named one of the 10 young writers on the rise by the Columbia Journalism Review, and he's contributed to the big ones, the Huffington Post, the New York Times, the Atlantic, Esquire, GQ, Mother Jones, and his book. You're going to love this book. It's The Woman Who Smashed Codes. It's a true story of Elizabeth Smith. I'm trying to remember the name Mm -hmm. of the lady. And she, uh, you know, they always say artists uh, don't really become known until they die well sometimes um, <laughs> other people also I guess you would call her a scientist uh, Jason Fagoni good morning I hope you're there are you there yeah I, I'm here good morning good Thanks morning for having me. thank you sir this is an amazing book and it, it's an amazing story how did you find out about Elizabeth Smith yeah so um a couple of years ago, uh, after the Edward Snowden disclosures, um, uh, you know, the revelation that the National Security Agency was gathering information on uh, millions of Americans' phone records, I became uh, interested in the NSA. I, I, I started reading about it. Where, what is the NSA? Where does it come from? How is it born? How did it grow? Ah, and that okay. Took- um, that took me to uh, to Elizabeth because uh, she happened to be married to uh, the godfather of, of the NSA, and it turned out that Elizabeth had this uh, amazing and wild kind of adventurous career of her own, and uh, and I started digging. Isn't that amazing? How does somebody become a code decipherer or whatever you would call her? How, how does that happen? You can't learn that in school, I'm thinking. I don't know. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, it was surprising to me to learn about Elizabeth because I had always sort of assumed that code breakers were mathematicians. So code, code breaking right. is basically the art of, of solving secret messages without knowing the key. And I, I had always thought that was a math skill. But uh, what makes Elizabeth special is that she was a poet. She was a, a, a school teacher. And she, uh, she loved Shakespeare and studied Shakespeare. And, and uh, she just happened to have a, a genius for seeing patterns and it, and it launched her on this uh, Isn't that remarkable 30 year career. That is amazing. And, and, and in essence, she really kind of saved the world or at least contributed to saving the world. And, and, uh, and, and did she even realize that at the time? Or, or would she have been humble and said, no, 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 you're over, you're over exaggerating my, my role? Would she say that, do you think? Yeah, yeah. She- she would have. She would have. Uh, she would have not wanted to be described that way at all. She was a very modest, modest person, uh, and partly that's the reason why uh, why her story is is not uh, is not known. But uh, but you're right. She she really did uh, do a couple of things that uh, that altered the shape of, of the 20th century for the better. I mean, one thing she did was she helped to invent the modern science of code breaking that uh, that still drives our intelligence agencies. Day, and she also uh, she hunted Nazis during World War Two. Wow! Uh, she hunted Nazis five. And uh, I didn't realize they were in uh, South America. The Nazis. Yes, I didn't know this either. This this is kind of a corner of World War. I mean, World War Two is such a familiar story. You know, we think we we, we know it, and uh, I didn't know about this corner of the war at all. So so this is this is the part of the war that. Uh, Winston Churchill famously called the Secret War. Uh, it was this, it was the Battle of Wits. It was the war that was happening beneath uh, public awareness, uh, uh, code breakers and uh, secret radio stations, uh, clandestine radio. Um, what was happening is the Nazis were sending spies into the Western Hemisphere. They were sending spies west, um, particularly into South America, which was a neutral continent. And these Nazi spies were setting up secret radio stations and um, spying on Allied ships and harbors, uh, trying to start coups to flip neutral countries toward the Nazi side. And then they were sending all of this information back to Berlin, back to the Reich. And what Elizabeth did was she uh, used her code-breaking abilities to intercept the radio messages, solve the codes, and wow. discover what the Nazis were saying, and ultimately uh, destroy those spy rings. Did she Was she physically in any harm's way? Not during World War II. She was in an earlier stage of her career. So during Prohibition, she, uh, she used her code-breaking skills to fight uh, rum running and drug smuggling. And in the course of that work, she uh, testified in a, in a bunch of uh, very visible cases against, um, against some pretty dangerous guys, including um, 
three of Al Capone's lieutenants. She, she would go into court and testify against these guys, and they would be able to look at her face. And so sometimes uh, she was protected by uh, federal agents in plain oh, wow. clothes uh, carrying it's, guns. It's just an amazing story of an amazing lady who we wouldn't know about if it wasn't for the book. Uh, I, I wish this was a longer interview. I know you're probably bogged down with radio interviews. Uh, Jason, thank you for being on our yeah. show, and thank you for sending the book. I have a copy that was sent to me. You're going to love this one. It's called The Woman Who Smashed Codes. Uh, Jason, I, uh, please correct me if I'm I'm mispronouncing your last name. Is it Fagoni? You got it. Yep. Okay, well, Jason Fagoni, thank you so much. For the, for the listeners, call me if you want the one copy that was sent to me. The rest of us have to go buy it. I found it on Amazon. It looks like you're getting really good reviews for the book. Um, and thank you for taking time. Do you have a website you want to direct us to? Sure. It's just uh, my name, jasonfagoni.com. And uh, thank you for having me. I really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you. Uh, that was awesome. And good luck with the book. Can't wait to finish it. Thank you. We'll be right back. Thank you. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Chris Foster. Making it easier to get hurricane relief to Puerto Rico, the federal government's waiving what's called the Jones Act for the next 10 days, allowing foreign flagged ships to deliver goods between U.S. ports. Fox's Geraldo Rivera in San Juan says... That can help get bulk relief in here, which is critically necessary. I'm standing in front of one of the zombie condos here that line the strip in San Juan. High-rise buildings without electrical power, without water. 12 stories, 15 stories high, no elevators. To flush the toilet, you need a gallon of water. You have to schlep it up there. So that gives you an idea of the crisis that rich and poor alike are suffering here in Puerto Rico. President Trump had said a lot of people... 